Hello everyone, hope you're having an amazing day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. In today's installment of the series, we're going to discuss some hotels featured on Hotel Hell and reveal if they're still open. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Roosevelt Inn In this season 1 episode, the famous Gordon Ramsay heads over to the Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast in Cœur d'Alene. Run by a man named John Hugh and his wife Tina alongside their daughter Lorian, John also doubles as a chef at the inn's restaurant. With their lack of clientele and the possibility of closing down, the family reaches out to the Hotel Hell team and Gordon Ramsay for some help. Upon his arrival, Ramsay is disappointed with the dull exterior and feels like it resembles a funeral parlor. When entering, his nose is assaulted with an unpleasant scent which he later finds to be coming from the owner's dogs. Surprised, Ramsay learns from John that the inn used to be his old elementary school, still decorated with old pictures on the wall. Showing him around, the owner reveals the $54,000 ballroom they took 4 years to renovate. In complete disbelief, Ramsay is perplexed at both the cost and the core of the ballroom since it just looks dated. Taken up to his room, not only is it dated like everything else, it's also very pink and costs $319 a night. Later speaking with Tina, she explains that she used to work at a dental office before owning the inn and that John impulsively purchased the building without her consent. Spending $700,000 to buy the inn, they now owe over $1.1 million, forcing them to sell their house, get a loan, and live in the inn's attic. Wanting to test John's food at the restaurant, both Ramsay and the locals are unimpressed with his tasteless and watery food. Criticizing John about his poor standards, the man is just incredibly stubborn and unwilling to listen. To really see how bad things are, Ramsay gathers some guests and the owners into his room with a black light and finds tons of bodily fluids all over the mattress and bedding. Completely disgusted by what they're seeing, Tina is brought to tears at the discovery of this filth. The following day, the famous chef meets with Tina and they discuss how they could turn the ballroom into a potential income boost. According to a wedding planner named Misty, it could become a great space for celebration if the decor, colors, and smells were corrected. Ready to bring this in to the next level, Ramsay starts working his magic by creating a new menu. This menu would feature home-cooked meals that can be made in one single pot out of their small kitchen. Working all night with his team to make renovations, Ramsay shocks the owners when he reveals their new honeymoon suite and upgraded ballroom. Getting his expert Misty to return, she is very satisfied with the changes made and feels like the room can now meet most wedding expectations. Hosting a wedding party to test the new facilities, everyone seems to be ecstatic with the overall experience. We have some very exciting news about this rescue. Not only is it still open, but it rocks a solid 4 stars on Yelp and 4.5 and on TripAdvisor. That's amazing! Tina and John have reported that their clientele has without a doubt increased since the Hotel Hell team left. Additionally, to commemorate all that Ramsay has done for them, they named one of their suites after him. What a great rescue! Curtis House The Curtis House Inn in Woodbury, Connecticut was visited by Gordon Ramsay in a Season 2 episode. Being the oldest inn in the state, it was built in 1736 and has been run by the Hardesty family for over 6 decades. Currently, it's run by Chris Hardesty and his sister TJ Brennan, who are the 4th generation to run the hotel. Since their business has only been going downhill for a while, tensions have arisen between the siblings which has affected how they run the inn. In desperate need of some professional guidance, they call out to Gordon Ramsay for some help. Excited to see the inn, Ramsay calls over his mother since it's Mother's Day to experience the historic building with him. Upon arriving, he seems to absolutely love the outside but is not really fond of the inn's creepy sign. Entering, he meets with someone named Shirley at the reception and he quickly learns that there is only one person booked for the night which is him. Despite this, due to the fact that the Hotel Hell host was 4 hours early, there would be a surcharge of $10 per hour. Oddly enough, the front desk takes down his credit card info into a physical book that could be taken by anyone with ill intentions. Jokingly, Ramsay runs out with the book to prove a point to which Shirley threatens to call the police. The famous chef just points out by the time that they arrive, he'll already have all the card details. Taken to his room, it's in a disgusting state with footprints stained on the pillowcase, dust and bug carcasses found everywhere, and a part of the bed collapses in his hand. Things are so bad that Ramsay is temporarily locked in his room as a result of a faulty door lock. Heading to the hotel's restaurant, Chef Ramsay orders some crab cakes which taste absolutely dreadful. Also ordering some fried calamari and a burger, both are equally as horrible and upon asking the other guests about their experience, they aren't really happy either. Confronting Chris about his skills as a chef, Ramsay expresses that he cooks like he hates the inn which angers him so much that he walks out. Wanting to find out why the staff think the inn is failing, he holds a meeting and they admit that there's a lack of communication and that the atmosphere is just toxic. One employee comes out and says that she needs to quit for these reasons and it causes a heated argument. Hoping to get through to the horrible owners, Ramsay gathers some of the previous guests so they can share their testimonials with them. 
Some of the complaints included people finding dirty sheets, chairs with skid marks, filthy windows, dusty rooms, and a broken shower curtain. Both Chris and TJ break down hearing these horrible reviews and promise that they will turn things around. Glad to hear that the owners were willing to change, Ramsey feels like it's time to start making some valuable changes. Decluttering the lobby, adding a new system to keep guest details safe, redoing the rooms and revamping the menu, things were finally going in the right direction. Come time to relaunch, every guest seems to love the new rooms and menu and Chris as well as TJ seem to be taking charge. Confident that the Curtis Inn would do just fine, Ramsey says his final goodbyes and checks out. While the inn certainly did well for a period of time after the hotel health team left, they ended up closing down in April of 2019. Supposedly, the owners wanted to move on to something else and sold it to new owners in September of 2018. Reopening over a year later, the business was renamed to Evergreen Inn and Tavern, which mostly has positive reviews. River Rock Inn For this last entry, Gordon Ramsay pays a visit to River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, which is owned by Ken Pisciotta, who is in deep debt. When arriving, Ramsay isn't greeted by anyone and finds no one at the reception. Only seeing a desk in a hallway, he later finds out that this is the check-in desk. Shown to his room by a woman named Karen, she talks about the fact that the hotel was built in the 1880s and Ramsay jokes about how it still has the same decor. Finding a closet that is full of hangers and extra carpeting for the floor, he also comes across some dead insects and a live cockroach. How nasty. At the corner of the room sits an awkwardly placed chair which is supposedly where there is the best Wi-Fi reception. Trying to watch some television on the ancient tube TV, there isn't any reception which makes Ramsay say that the rooms aren't fit for public use. Hopeful, Ramsay heads over to the restaurant to test out their food and finds out that the owner Ken is a chef. Ken honestly rates the rooms 4 to 5 out of 10 and the dinner 7 to 8 out of 10, so the famous chef sits down to sample the food. Frankly, the menu is quite confusing since it not only features Mexican but Thai and Italian as well instead of local dishes. Ordering an appetizer, it comes back tasting bland and certainly not fresh. The main dish is way too big and Ramsay is just left feeling disappointed. Following his horrible meal, Ramsay sits down with the staff who expose the fact that the rooms are dirty because Ken doesn't check them. The biggest revelation to come from this discussion was the fact that the inn was losing close to $7,000 a month. To be completely certain that the sheets in his room were clean, Ramsay uses a black light which reveals some semen stains. Calling in the staff to get some guest testimonials, some expressed that the drains were not working properly, the shower head was way too low, the mattress was extremely hard and that they found insects roaming around. Vowing not to come back to the inn for these reasons, Ken seems very apologetic and isn't proud of the state of his business. Working together, the staff attempt to thoroughly clean the inn while Ramsey brings in all the sheets to a dry cleaner. Setting up a private staff meeting while Ken listens in another room, they admit that their boss could sometimes be aggressive and discourage them from working effectively. While these comments certainly hurt, Ken admits that they're true and vows to change his behavior. Seeing the owner's willingness to change, Ramsey starts preparing for the upcoming renovations. Adding a new sign to the outside, giving the inn a new router, redecorating the reception and dining area, and updating the inn's website, things were finally looking good. After the show aired, reviews were very mixed and it sadly ended up closing down back in December of 2014. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!